The offense may be getting the accolades, but the defense is still the difference maker for your New England Patriots. Stick around. You're about to be locked in to the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful, and thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage and also your first listen each and every day. Remember, Locked On Patriots is not only a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, but we're also free and available on all platforms, especially YouTube. So be sure to smash that subscribe button and download and follow Locked On Patriots wherever you get your podcasts to ensure that you're getting the latest episode as soon as it's available. I'm your host, Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots for the Patriots country. So reach out to me and let me know what's on your mind on X at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. And while you're out there showing some social media love to Locked On Patriots, please follow our account there as well at LO underscore Patriots. And Pats fans, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Pats fans, a lot is being made about your New England Patriots offense. A new look, a new offensive coordinator, brand new quarterback, some new pieces to try to help this team finally get into the end zone, something they haven't done a whole lot of in the last couple of years. But if you know your Patriots football, you know this team is still predicated on defense, and it will be this year. That is still the alpha unit in this Patriots locker room. And arguably the heart and soul of the Patriots defense starts in the interior of the defensive line. Guys like Christian Barmore, Keon White, Dietrich Wise, Devon Gottschall, and so much more are ready to make this team formidable once again. And we're going to take a look at the interior of the Patriots defensive line today. And here to lend his wisdom in counsel the way only he can is locked on Patriots' first line of defense. My good friend, my Patriots Bison, columnist extraordinaire for PatsFans.com, as well as being the co-host of an amazing Patriots podcast, Patriots 4th and 2 alongside Derek Havens. He is Steve Balistrieri. Steve, thank you so much for joining me here today, and welcome back to Locked On Patriots. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And, you know, it's, we're in kind of those doldrums of the summer before training camp starts, so uh, it's always good to talk some football with you. And uh, I'm sure we'll have at least one Godfather reference today. Oh, I'm absolutely sure. There's no question about it. We're talking about defense. We're talking about protection. Yeah, we might. I might ask you who the Patriots' Luca Brazzi is going to be this year, my friend. So we're already getting the Godfather references in. But bottom line, Steve, the New England Patriots right now are entering the 2024 season as a team that's not expected to win many games. But the games they do win are going to be hard-fought defensive battles. This is a team that could keep you in any game, depending on how the defense performs. If they're performing on all, they're clicking on all cylinders and they're performing at a high level, this is a defense that can hold pretty much any team in check. We saw them do it last year, and the Patriots are poised to do it again this year, maybe even better than what they did in 2023, considering guys like Matthew Judon and Christian Gonzalez are going to be back in the fold. We're going to get to the linebackers and the cornerbacks in due time here on Locked On Patriots. But in my opinion, when you build the defense, it begins and ends with the interior of that defensive line. And the Patriots have a pretty good core there. Christian Barmore, Devon Godchow, most likely going to be either Keon White or Dietrich Wise forming that three-man front. Now, the Patriots did lose Lawrence Guy in the offseason. That's definitely a hole, not just in terms of the leadership qualities that he's able to perform, but Lawrence, let's face it, was a very good defender against the run. One of the big reasons why the Patriots were so prolific in stopping the run in 2023. So now when you look at this group in 2024, most Patriots fans are looking at either Christian Barmore or Devon Godchow being the linchpin, being the main ingredient in keeping that line not only formidable, but also maybe even taking it to a different level. If you're the Patriots right now and you're looking at who's going to be the line and you're going to lean upon most to do so, is it the younger Barmore with the big upside 
or is it the veteran godchild that is involved in so many things that don't end up on the stat sheet, but is so vital to their success? Well, I think it depends on the situation, right? I think early down, more of a run type situation, godchild's the guy. They really don't have another player on the roster built like him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's at least, what, 20 pounds heavier than anybody else. So, you know, when you look at what he does, he's that anchor. And and I think you hit the nail on the head, right? I mean, he does so much that doesn't end up on the stat sheet. And they had a guy like that for many years, Mr. Wilfork, mm-hmm. you know, and he never really got his due for the things that he did because he allowed them to do so much. Now, when it comes to Barmore, I think – we finally saw what the Patriots saw in him when they drafted him and a, a year ago. And, you know, he came on. I thought he had a tremendous 2023 season. I think he's even going to be better this year. And I think with those two guys, you know, in the middle of your, your front, um, you know, you have to look at it. This could be the difference if these guys have a both elevate their game even further. It could go from having a, you know, very good defense to a complete shutdown, you know, monster defense. Very good point. And I'm glad that you mentioned their ability to take on the double team, especially with Godshaw, because Murph and I talked about yesterday how perfect of a fit Devon has been in this two gapping scheme that the Patriots have run so successfully over the course of the last couple of years. I think you'd be hard pressed anywhere in the NFL to find two better players that could fit the Patriots scheme, that two gapping scheme, than Devon Godshaw and also Christian Barmore. Let's not forget about Barmore's ability to take on the double team as well. Um, Matthew Judon positions himself very close to Christian Barmore more often than not. And if Judon's going to be healthy this year, the way we all believe he will be, I think you're going to see a lot more of that because that's when you see the illuminated Matthew Judon teams automatically panic and they try to double Christian can take that and he can sustain it long enough to get Matthew free around the edge and let him get after the quarterback and start collecting sacks. That's when you start to see that sack total go up and up and he's reaching career highs. Look at most of the opportunities he's had to get after the quarterback. It's when he positions himself very closely to Christian Barmore. So in my opinion, that defensive line is going to be such a key for the linebackers to get into position, to get after the quarterback. The edge rush benefits tremendously from that. So big advantages for Keon White and Dietrich Wise in that situation. But as you know, it also facilitates the secondary as well. Guys like Christian Gonzalez, guys like Jonathan Jones, even in the slot, or if he's playing on the other side in the perimeter, Marcus Jones, Isaiah Bolden, Alex Austin, all of these cornerbacks that are expected to play a good size role in the Patriots defense can now set themselves up to be able to lock down their targets without necessarily having to rush up or play a little bit more up front and leave themselves vulnerable in the back. I think this is an excellent defensive front, and these two guys are really the reason why it works so well. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, again, you you look at it, and, you know, pressure is the thing with opposing quarterbacks. And if you're getting your pressure from the interior, that gives the quarterback no chance to step up into the pocket. We watched Tom Brady do that. For 20 years as a member of the Patriots, right? Mm -hmm. Edge rushers, you never really worried about edge rushers because Brady could step up in the pocket and neutralize that threat. Mm -hmm. But when you're pushing that pocket from the interior, there's nowhere to step up. And then, you know, if quarterbacks have to throw off their back foot, as we've seen last year with, with New England, your throws tend to sail, right? interceptions start happening it's all interrelated and i think that these two guys um you know if they have the kind of season we're looking at they could totally transform this defense into a monster defense 
Yeah, absolutely. And you look at what this team did against the run last year, Steve. And obviously, Barmore and Godshaw being a big part of the reason why they were able to do it. That's ranking first in holding teams, opposing teams to yards per carry at a 3.3, which is the best in the league. And then you look, they're also fourth at that point in total run defense, holding teams to an average of 93.2 rushing yards per game. That's in a forgettable 4-13 and season in which nothing seemed to go right for the Patriots, especially their ability to get after opposing quarterbacks because Matthew Judon was not in the lineup. Joshua Uche's numbers suffered in that regard. So they were getting sacks, but they weren't getting it from their primary members. Now, if those two guys are healthy and alongside each other in the interior of that defensive line, namely Barmore and Godchild, I think that frees up guys like Judon and Uche to be able to get after the quarterback. Like you said, all of a sudden, you're taking a defense that was very good against the run last year and serviceable against the pass, and now you could be making it equally as potent against the run and the pass. I'm really looking forward to seeing what this defense can do on the field. Yeah, and think about, I mean, think about how how long they were on the field last year. Mm, you know, because the offense couldn't sustain drives. So, you know, um, they were spending an inordinate amount of time on the field, you know. And so if the offense improves just a little bit, that'll keep these guys even fresher, which I believe, you know, will make them even better. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, we expect the offense to be at least a little bit better than it well. That's not setting the bar very high, but yeah. <laughs> but you know where I'm going with Fortunately, this. <laughs> I do know where you're going with it. And look, bottom line, I think that's one of the big reasons why you've seen Ramondre Stevenson extended. And again, I touched on this a little bit yesterday in my conversation with Murph. Ramondre and his presence in this lineup right now allows the Patriots to know that they have that solid running back upon which Alex Van Pelt can build his new look offense. The type of offense that uses the run, that outside <clears throat> wide zone run and those wide zone run concepts to his advantage. So that way he can keep defenses on their heels in first and second down, extend drives, be able to take deep shots down the field, maybe on the third and catch, you know, a defense that may not be as uh, you know readily available to defend in those areas and the Patriots can challenge and maybe push things a little bit more than they could in the past. It has a ripple effect on the defense and you're absolutely right. It keeps their legs fresh because the less of the amount of time that they're out there on the field, it's going to make them fresher when they come in. It's going to continue to cultivate stamina and also it's good for their health. I mean, you know, if you're not on the field taking shots all the time and taking hits, it allows you the opportunity to stay healthier. Uh, before we take our leave of this subject, I just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, Devon's recent comments about hoping things will work out, getting something together by training camp. Based on what he had to say earlier this week to PFN's Dan Kelly, do you believe uh, that makes it more likely or less likely that, Dev that uh, uh, Devon gets a contract extension heading into camp or maybe during camp? Yeah, I, I think it's more likely. I mean, because again, I mean, they they don't have a player on the roster they can replace him with, right? You know, and and they realize this. And you know, I remember that when Godchow got his his uh, his really good deal from Bill Belichick, a lot of people mm -hmm. were shocked by it, and they ridiculed Bill mm -hmm. uh, uh, for this. And Bill kept saying. He's one of the best players in the – I remember him saying that. He's one of the best players in the NFL because, he, you know, there's only a few guys that can do the things that he does. And I think, you know, I think he likes it here. I think he wants to to stay in New England. And, you know, all you want guys that produce and want to be here. Right. You know? Such a great and, point. And – and uh you know they're they're rewarding the guys who uh, performed last year, and you know they're giving them pretty good deals across the board. And you know I think when you you talked about the run first against the run in uh, yards per carry, and who was a better example of that than Godshaw? Exactly. Without any question. And one of the big reasons why, like you said, the Patriots were so good against the run last year was because of Devon and what he's able to do. 
during that statement, he mentioned at least two or three times how much he loves being in New England and how much he'd love to finish his career in New England. I think that's a sign of Patriots management to say, you know what, let's get this done. Let's come to a happy medium. I want something to work out. I know you do as well. Yeah, I think this comes together. And I think the Patriots would be extremely smart to get this done either before camp or maybe just into it a little bit if you want to wait until he arrives and gets back here. But don't leave this lingering for too long. And Steve, there are some questions right now about second-year defensive end Keon White and the jump that he's about to make. Keon is being more of a vocal leader on the field than we've seen him. And what does that mean for current team captain and defensive end extraordinaire Dietrich Wise? Steve and I are going to discuss that, about whether or not these two may be embroiled in a camp battle for that third spot along the Patriots' defensive front and the importance of both of these gentlemen to the Patriots' success on defense this year. More on the Pats defensive line as we preview the interior right here on the Locked On Patriots podcast, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, passion, drive, and patience is what brings home that winning trophy. You know what? It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. Our good friends over at eBay Motors have everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks to exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Patriots fans, thank you once again for joining us here today on this interior D-line preview episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast. And if we're previewing defensive lines, if we're talking defense at all, we have to go to our first line of defense. Our resident voice of reason, my Patriots paisan, Steve Balistrieri of PatsFans.com joining us. Steve, in the previous segment, we talked about the importance of Christian Barmore and Devon Godshaw. But One of the things I think the Patriots would love to do more of this year, or maybe do it at more of a successful rate, is get after the quarterback. And the Patriots have two guys, not named Matthew Judon or Josh Uche, that are capable of doing just that when called upon. Defensive ends, Keon White and Dietrich Wise. Now, Steve, White's first season with the Pats was statistically quiet, but he still made his presence felt in the team's front seven. He's known for his edge rush prowess. We saw him do it at Georgia Tech. We knew the type of guy and the type of motor this kid had when he was drafted in the second round of the 2023 NFL draft. But we also saw him align in a lot of different areas last year during training camp, group practices, and in the limited sample size that we had of him getting in-game action. He aligned at an outside linebacker, set in a three-point stance. We saw him showcase some of that pass rush. He played the run. We also even saw him drop back into coverage on select packages as well. And in that vein, Keon is proving his value. And he's also becoming a little bit more of a vocal leader this year on the field. You're seeing him help direct traffic, tell new players where to be and how they need to be there. These are things we typically saw from Dietrich Wise, who is a longstanding veteran here, someone who I know not only personally, but also have covered professionally since he was drafted as a member of the Arkansas Razorbacks. I can still remember Dietrich being my first one-on-one interview when I was transferred back to the Patriots beat from working uh, with the Chargers beat for a number of years. So I have an awful lot of affection for this guy as well. But my question to you, when you look at both of these guys, conventional wisdom says they're both key members of this defense this year but could they be in a positional battle to earn that third spot that edge spot along the line or do you think there's enough football and enough room along this line for the both of them to make a simultaneous impact oh yeah i i firmly believe that in fact um you know i i think you'll see them on the field quite a bit together i i firmly believe that because barmore is going to need you know 
some some reps and you know depending on what package they're in we could see both of them you know on the line at the same time or you know Godchow comes out bar more slides more toward the middle i think you know we can envision a lot of scenarios where these guys are but i believe white is the future i mean they drafted this guy last year and you know i when when I saw her on the, the agenda, we were going to be talking about him. I was going to mention all the things that you did about what he did as a rookie last year. And don't forget, Belichick typically likes to ease his rookies in, find one thing he's good at, and then gradually increase his slice of the pie. Well, last year, they had such faith in him that they were allowing him to do a lot of things right off the bat, which tells you he's very smart. He's very football smart. He's a hard worker, and he's putting the work in to uh, to learn all of these responsibilities. I think you're going to see him doing a ton of stuff this year. But that's not to say Wise is going out with the bathwater. I think there's room on this defense for both of these guys. I think you'll see their reps split pretty evenly. Now, in you know, in regards to a camp competition, oh yeah, because each of these guys wants to be the big dog. Right. You know that, you know, because they both have that mentality, and that's a great thing. Mm. Because they're they're not really competing against each other; they're competing against themselves to be that best player that they can be. That's why I think there's plenty of room on this defense for both of these guys. And, you know, we were talking pass rush. Now we talked about the interior guys and, the, <clears throat> you know, you put these guys out on the edge with Judon opposite them. Now you have four guys that can get after the passer on every down, including Josh Huche. Makes it five, right? Mm. So – you can bring pressure from all over the place and you can keep fresh legs on the field. And I think white is going to have a fantastic year this year. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing Keon, especially in training camp when they put the pads on after the first few days of practice, you start to see some of the contact and you start to see some of these guys push back and the strength of what they're able to do at their given positions. Um, you don't see Keon White get pushed around all that much, and I don't think you're going to see that this year either. Uh, this kid has definitely made a, a pretty good leap from where he was last year and kind of coming into his own and really, I think, validating what Bill Belichick and the Patriots' brain trust in 2023 saw in him to select him in the second round. Don't forget, a lot of people were disappointed with the pick and I say that tongue in cheek, but they were disappointed with the pick because they thought the Patriots were going to take a receiver or somebody that was, you know, going to be focused on offense in that pick because they had already gone defense with Christian Gonzalez. Keon was projected as a first rounder in a lot of mock drafts that year. Uh, he had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. I remember we all were reacting to his draft reaction that night and the stoic face that he had. Yeah, I think some of it was the fact that he's just not an overly animated guy when it comes to things like that. But there was also some anger, I think, and it's probably some disappointment uh, that he wasn't chosen in the first round. I think he wants to prove to everyone that he is the type of defender that can change the complexity of a defense. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch him this year. And Gerard Mayo has already labeled him as a guy to watch, someone who's made a huge leap from last year to this year. Let's see if that continues into this season. And it also leads me quite nicely into my question for you, Steve, on Dietrich Wise, because I agree with you. I think there is more than enough room for these guys to be simultaneous contributors. Uh, I think they will compete with each other for status, but not necessarily compete with each other for their position. But Dietrich is entering the final year of his contract. We don't hear his name come up an awful lot of players that are seeking the contract extension or that deserve one. The fact that it's quiet on the front when it comes to the Dietrich Wise contract situation, do you think that could end up working against him if White really comes on and plays at another level uh, from where we think he's capable of playing? Does that make it any more or less likely that Dietrich may be playing his final season in the wing? I'm not sure. I mean, again, I don't know, you know, how, how they feel about everything and, um, 
when it comes to Dietrich and, you know, um, whether they think he's starting to slip a little bit or he's still playing at a high level. I mean, if White surpasses him, but Dietrich is still playing at the level he has, that's a really good thing. That's not a bad thing. You know what I mean? I mean, that's this is a, a type of situation that, you know, when you're talking defense, the rich get richer. And right. uh, I, I I don't know. I mean, that's something that we'll, maybe we'll have to read the tea leaves with Elliot Wolf during the, the season. And, again, you know, we should get an inkling of that starting in training camp. You know, we'll yeah. see how these guys uh, bring it on the field. But um, I'm not so sure. I mean, I think they love the depth that they have defensively right now. So um, I don't think any moves would be coming. I, I just think that, you know, depending on, you know, how he feels about his contract as well, that might have something to do with it. Throughout his career here in New England, since he was drafted in the fourth round of the 2017 NFL draft, 285 tackles, 29 sacks, five forced fumbles, tremendous field vision, always knows what's going on on the field, and the experience that he has, the field savvy that he has, I think is going to be so important for young guys along that line, especially with Lawrence Guy not there anymore. It puts a lot of, I think, more spotlight on Dietrich's leadership ability, his captainship, and being where he's been uh, for the last uh, you know couple of years and really building himself into a elder, not only elder statesman along the Patriots defensive line, but also one of their most respected members. So he said several times he's approaching this year, just like any other, go out, give it my all. Obviously he's motivated with it being a contract year, but um, having two guys like this with the skill set they have and the abilities they have quote you steve yeah i think they love that uh that's a very good embarrassment of riches to have for the new england <laughs> patriots and only speaks to the strength of this defensive line especially along the interior i think that you know you can't have enough good players on defense especially when your offense is, is still trying to find itself Steve, when you talk about the Patriots defense, the big four, if you want to call them that, the fantastic four along this interior of the defensive line, whether it be Christian Barmore, Devin Godchow, Keon White, or Dietrich Wise Jr. are obviously four formidable defenders that any team would be happy to employ. But it's not just all about these guys. There are members, unsung heroes along the interior that might be poised to make a pretty good impact on this team's defense this year. Armand Watts, formerly of the Pittsburgh Steelers, is a new face in the house. Jeremiah Farms is a name you hear an awful lot but may not know too much about. And there are plenty of others to discuss in this area as well. Who among the best of the rest is poised to make the biggest impact in training camp and beyond? Steve and I will answer that question in just a moment when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast wraps up right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Listen up, Locked On listeners. We all love sports. I love sports. In fact, I love them so much, I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs start winding down, we get fewer games. And the sports aren't sportsing like we want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open up the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right, there's something for everyone, every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most of your summer. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Patriots fans, thank you once again for joining us here today on this interior D-line preview episode. And I am joined by Steve Balistrieri of PatsFans.com, my Patriots Paisan, our first line of defense and our last line of defense because he's the only one we need, folks. And he is lending his wisdom and counsel when it comes to the Patriots defense, especially the interior of the defensive line. Steve, we can sing the praises of Christian Barmore, Devin Godshaw, Keon White, and Dietrich Wise Jr. all day. 
it's not a stretch of the imagination to say these guys are top level players but there are players on this roster as well especially along the interior of the defensive line that will be poised to make an impact when you look at the best of the rest and looking at this depth chart who would you say is poised to make the biggest impact on this team especially in training camp from the guys that we have not mentioned yet on this podcast you know, uh, I'm so intrigued with Armand Watts. Mm. And I know they only gave him a one-year deal. It's kind of a prove-it deal. It wasn't for big money either. But I think that he could possibly outplay his contract. Um, I like the fact that, you know, when he was originally drafted, he was a 4-3 tackle. But then he went to the Steelers. He played 3-4. So he has that kind of versatility. Um, I think he's a good player. I think he might be even a better player with this defense this year. Um, I just have that feeling. Now, we'll see during training camp if that all works out. But I just have a sneaky suspicion that this guy is going to work out quite well. And, uh, you know, he's... uh, He's bounced around a little bit, but he's had 26 starts in his NFL career. So, you know, um, it's not like he hasn't shown some talent out there. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I mean, he went to the Steelers last year. We know their defensive front is really solid. Always. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, so the opportunities weren't going to be glaring for him, you know, to, uh, get on the field a lot last year. But I I just have that feeling that he's going to be one of those guys that comes out of nowhere. You don't really hear a lot about him. But, you know, when he gets to New England, he's going to be a very good fit. We've seen guys like that in the past. Um, You know, they've always had a knack for finding those guys. And so we'll see how he works out. But I'm pretty excited for this guy. I'm excited to watch him as well. Started with the Vikings, uh, joined the Chicago Bears, and for the past two years, he's been with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I look at the type of interest that the Steelers showed in him. They wanted to re-sign him. They definitely, you know, the the Steelers front office made it very clear to Watts that they were interested in retaining him. But I think what helped make his decision is that the Patriots made a strong push for him. Uh, He felt that uh, he was wanted here, that he was desired, and his skill set would translate very well into this defense. And I think that's exactly to your point. The Patriots identified him as someone that can play in so many of the sets that they may align. The Patriots are one of the few defenses in the league that can make the switch from 3-4 to 4-3 and still be effective in either alignment. Uh, There are a lot of ways that this defensive line can come together. And to me, Armand Watts suits them perfectly. Last year, had a pretty decent season. 15 tackles, half a sack, uh, 15 games, so you know he's durable. Uh, He did not start one of the games last year, and I think that may have been part of his appeal because the Patriots are very well loaded, as we've talked about in the previous two segments here, with starters. What they need is solid role players, guys that can come in, that know their job, that are willing to play, uh, that are willing to do that type of a job, and then hopefully parlay it into maybe a larger role in subsequent years or even in the same year. So the fact that I think that the Patriots made the strong push for him shows that they have high hopes, and I do believe he's going to be someone that can be an impact player. I'm not necessarily going to pencil him into the starting lineup, for the Patriots at any point this season, barring any injury. But it's nice to know that this guy can give you that type of production if they need him because of injury. But most importantly, if that team is at full strength or at least close to it for the better part of the season, having someone like Armand Watts on the bench is a clear sign of strength, and it only speaks to their wealth along the interior of the defensive line. Oh, yeah. And, you know, um the Patriots love guys who are versatile. He's yeah. played everything from a zero technique to a five technique. Mm-hmm. So he's played all along the line. He's comfortable playing anywhere they want to plug him in. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a situation where he can either make the most of it, which I think he's going to do, or, you know, he could find himself out of a job. I really think he's going to show up at training camp and turn some heads Um, because this is where these big guys, this is where they make their money. 
you know, in, in T-shirts and shorts, you can't really see the physicality of stuff. <laughs> and so now will be his opportunity. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I just really, I you know, when I saw the signing, it didn't raise a lot of eyebrows, but I was like, I like this signing because I, I think he's one of those guys that will, you know, I'll play his contract. So, you know, um, I like the fact that the Patriots targeted him and went hard after him. And then again, you know, defensive line coach Jerry Montgomery recruited him out of high school. Mm -hmm. So he knows him. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I think there's that familiarity there. So I I, I like that fact. And I just I'm really excited for this guy. Yeah, I think Watts is going to catch a lot of eyes. I know he's going to catch mine, especially when the pads come on and the contact starts. That's when you can really see the line come together and who's going to emerge. Steve, before we take our leave of this subject, there are still a few names out there that we haven't mentioned, guys that could potentially make an impact. Daniel Aquale, the veteran who continues to make his presence felt along the Patriots line, injured last year, but he looks to be back. Jeremiah Farms is a name we keep hearing about, started out on the practice squad. He keeps making his name known on that roster. Uh, Tristan Hill is a possibility. Sam Roberts is someone who's still on this team. Of the best of the rest at that point, that's not named Armand Watts, any of the names that I just mentioned stand out to you as a potential impact player this year? Yeah, Aquale is a guy, He he's another one that, you know, he's kind of surprised people. Um, you know, when, when they brought him in, not many people gave him a, a big chance of making the team. But in limited, you know, spurts, he's been very productive. I, I like Aquale. I also like Farms. You know, um, he's another kid that, you know, um, went from the USFL to the NFL. And, uh, you know, he was signed to the active roster last year. So, you know, I I, I like Farms, too. I think there's going to be some great competition in camp this year. I like Sam Roberts. I thought Roberts showed it some good flashes last year during um, preseason and training camp. So we'll see. I mean, um, you know, the better players you have on defense, the more you're going to help out the team because uh, we know the defense is going to spend a lot of time on the field again this year. (laughs) Folks, there are a lot of different combinations and permutations this defensive line, especially along the interior, could take. Did we mention some of your favorites? Are there players that you're waiting to see throughout the training camp cycle? We would love to hear your thoughts on the Patriots' defensive line, especially along the interior, so drop us a note in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I want to give a tip of the cap and thank my good friend, my Patriots paisan, Steve Balistrieri, for providing the protection that we need. Steve, I said earlier that I was going to ask you to provide your thoughts on who the Patriots' Luca Brazzi would be on the defensive line, but you are the Luca Brazzi of Locked On Patriots. <laughs> whenever we need the muscle, whenever we need that protection, we always go to you. But the difference is you've got the wisdom in the council to be a Don yourself, my friend. So you get the total package. You can't ask for more. It's always my honor and privilege to share the microphone with you. Before I let you go, Please let everyone know what they can expect from the great pen of Steve Balistrieri when it comes to your content at PatsFans.com and what we can expect from you and Derek on Patriots 4th and 2 this week. Yeah, we're going to continue with some profiles of uh, some of the new new players um, on our podcast. Uh, we're going to be talk- talking about some of the camp battles that are upcoming. Uh, I take an early look at roster projection because it's never too soon for that stuff. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, talking about Luca Brazzi, you have to use a quote, right? Mm-hmm. And that band leader, Luca Brazzi, told him either his signature or his brains are going to be on that paper. <laughs> That's a true story. Mm-hmm. How you do like you like the lasagna? lasagna? <laughs> <laughs> You knew we were going there, folks. You knew the minute he mentioned Luca and he mentioned the brains of the signature being on the contract, you knew we were going to talk and you knew we were going to drop the comment about the lasagna. But uh, he's a very scary guy, Steve. He helps my father out. 
all kidding aside, uh, we definitely, we enjoy having Steve here and you know, he's a regular here on Locked On Patriots. He will continue to be, and we can't wait to have him back next week. But in the meantime, please check out what he and Derek do on Patriots fourth and two, an amazing listen. One of my favorites uh, throughout the Patriots uh, uh, podcast cycle. And of course, anytime Steve puts pen to paper, especially his Sunday morning column, it's appointment reading. Our good friend Murph calls it the Sunday paper, and he does it for a reason because it really is the way that you should begin each and every Sunday. And we're always happy to feature it here on Locked On Patriots. And in the meantime, another tip of the cap and a nod to the gods to my good friend, my Patriots Paisan, Steve Balistrieri, for joining me here today. On behalf of Steve, I am Mike DeBate, and I remind you all to stay safe and to stay well and to be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow on Locked on Patriots.